All right, well, good evening, Bible Baptist Church. We're in Malachi this evening. A couple of announcements. So next, next Sunday, we're still online, and we'll be doing that till April 30th for sure. Um, some of you have expressed interest in coming up and helping. Please call me if you're going to do that, and we'll make arrangements here if you're going to come up here and help on Sundays. But in general, all of our services are going to be online until April 30th. So, at, at least that's the, that's the latest. Um, then, uh, as far as giving, that's another thing you guys have asked about. Giving, uh, you can give two ways. You can mail in a check, P.O. Box 247, Beeville, Texas, 78104. Uh, mail it in to P.O. Box 247, Beeville, Texas, 78104. Or you can go online and uh, go to bbcbeeville.com, go to the website, bbcbeeville.com, and go to the Give Online, and then you can just fill in your information there and give that way. So uh, those are a couple things. Um, another thing... If you're, if you're watching now, we've got the, the landscape view here, so hopefully I'm not sideways. I, I think we got it fixed. Um, Y'all can give a thumbs up if it's, if it's okay. Sam can see back there. Uh, so if, I, if I'm right side up, you, just need, you might need to, you can flip your phone and you can see it in landscape, and uh, it fills the screen now, so... Fix that, and one exciting thing, another exciting thing is, you might have noticed on YouTube and on the fa Facebook page, uh, we're starting to put out some BBC Kids material, um, songs, Bible stories, various different things for the kids from Children's Church, and so that is really exciting. Uh, go there, we're, we're going to have a playlist on, on our YouTube channel that has... BBC Kids, and uh, that is, it's exciting, it's neat. Malachi chapter 1 is where we are at this evening, and verse 12, and uh, really it goes in line starting at verse 6, but uh, it, it, we're continuing in the theme, it's a form of godliness, and what God is doing or through Malachi. Malachi means messenger. Lord, uh, Malachi is a messenger of the Lord. And what Malachi is preaching to Israel is uh, this is the last message before the Lord Jesus Christ uh, appears in the flesh 400 years later. And so the condition really of the nation of Israel in Malachi's day, 400 years before Jesus Christ uh, shows up manifest in the flesh, it's the same condition that is there in Israel when the Lord shows up. And the priesthood is corrupt, the prophets are corrupt, um, there's, there's just a, a, a whole lot of trouble and really the Lord uses the heathen and describes elements of, of the heathen and then compares how the heathen respond to God and versus how God's own people respond to God. And so it's, it's uh, and when I say God's own people, right now he's, discuss, he's talking about Israel. Malachi is the last book in your Old Testament. Verse 12, I'll read these verses, we'll pray, and then we will, I'll show you three things about these verses that deal with a form of godliness. All right, Malachi chapter 1, verse 12. The Lord says, but ye have profaned it. It's talking about the Lord's table. But ye have profaned it in that ye say the Lord's table, or the table of the Lord is polluted, and the fruit thereof, even as meat, is contemptible. Ye said also, behold, what a weariness is it, and ye have snuffed at it, saith the Lord of hosts. And ye brought that which was torn and the lame and the sick, thus she brought an offering, and should I accept this of your hand, saith the Lord? But cursed be the deceiver which hath in his flock a male, and voweth and sacrificeth unto the Lord a 
corrupt thing. For I am a great king, saith the Lord of hosts, and my name is dreadful among the heathen. All right, let's pray, and we're going to talk about a form of godliness, just kind of continuing that thought throughout Malachi. There's a form of godliness here, but it is not godliness. But let's pray. Father, I pray you'd help us through all this, um, get what we need out of these verses. It is a, it's a instructive, it's a rebuke really to Israel, and it's the last message you have to them before you show up in the flesh. And I pray that... Uh, uh, as we go through these verses, we could get what we need out of this. You'd feed us with what we need. And thank you for your words. Thank you for salvation in Jesus Christ. Thank you for uh, taking care of us the way you do. I pray you'd give our government wisdom, our leaders wisdom. Um, pray that the folks that are financially hurt by being told they can't work and businesses being shut down, I pray that you would... Get them back on their feet quickly. I pray that uh, this could be over with quickly and that uh, people would not be too hurt by this or that you could use this to, to people's advantage. And I know you can, and I pray you would. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Malachi chapter 1, verse 12 through 14. There's three things about these verses uh, where the Lord is describing a form of godliness that uh, really has no power, it has no purpose, it's a religion, and, and it really, the, the, God's people, the nation of Israel, um, they had all, all the advantages, as we've talked about multiple times, they had all the advantages that other nations don't have, they had the words of God primarily, they had the law, they had the uh, 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 glory, the, the covenants, adoption, all those kinds of things. And in spite of all of that, in spite of all of that, uh, they took all those things and became familiar with them and really just th their, through their sin, it, was, it, it, it became a, a, a religion without any sort of prophet or, or I shouldn't say prophet without any any power to it it was what Paul says in the New Testament a form of godliness but denying the power thereof all right so verse 12 notice this this is the this is the 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 idea in verse 12 the Lord says but ye have profaned it in that ye say the table of the Lord is polluted so they would come to the come to the Lord's house they would come to the table of the Lord and there would be it would just be kind of uh, sacrifices and moldy bread and stuff like that. I mean, it was just a, a kind of a mess. But here's the point. The Lord's table is what, sh what, what, what they had made it. And really the Lord's table is what you make of it. Uh, it it's, uh, the, the word pollution shows up here and it's not about the environment. It's about the hearts of men. They're polluted. And the things they bring show that their hearts are polluted. And so the first point is this. The Lord's table is what, what you've made it, is what the Lord says. You're the ones who have brought these sacrifices that are, are contemptible to you. And then you bring them to the house of the Lord. And then you say the house of the Lord is contemptible. And it's kind of like the, the, the Lord is pointing out, you, You've made it this way. You're, you're the ones that are, that are bringing these things, and then you're complaining about the condition of the religion. You're complaining about the condition of what, what, what's, what's happened here. And so the people would bring uh, the lame, the sick, disease, the, the moldy bread, and, the, and the, the priest would accept all these things, and uh, these would be offered to God, and... Pretty soon, I mean, in these verses, you realize that the people, they really don't understand the point of any of this. And, and it would make sense that they would, be, or they wouldn't, because they are offering this, this, these sick animals, animals that were going to be thrown away anyway, and, and they're offering these things, and then going home and, and you know, just living their lives according to the way they're going to live their lives, and Nothing, nothing really amounted to anything, and pretty soon the next generation starts to ask, why do we even 
why are we even going to the temple anymore? Why do we even go to the tabernacle? What is the point of all of this religion that mom and dad had? And so they got tired of the whole thing, and ultimately they blame it on God. They say the table of the Lord is contemptible. So what, they, what that led to is, why are we even doing this? Which led to this, this whole serving God thing is just a drag. It's just a burden. I mean, why, we're doing these things that, that just, that we don't even understand why we're doing them anymore. Or we've never understood why we're doing them. And so the first point is this. The Lord's table is what they made it. And truly that's the case with, with life now and the Lord now. The Lord's table is what, what you make of it. Um, throughout the Bible the Lord is very much like a mirror in a lot of respects. Uh, for instance, he says, uh, Give and it shall be given unto you. Um, Judge not, lest you be judged with what manner ye meet, it'll be meted back to you. It's kind of like you, you have this, this is, this is your gauge, this is your uh, way of handling things, and it will be, the Lord is very much like a mirror. You draw nigh to him, and he'll draw nigh to you. You, you turn away from him, and he turns away from you. It's, it's, he's very much like a mirror in that. And so when people start to see what they see at the Lord's table, what they're seeing is kind of what they're bringing to the table. And that's, that was the case with Israel. They saw what they were bringing to the table. The problem was they started to just blame it on God, as though it was God's fault for burdening them with trying to serve God in this way. So verse 13, they, the Lord says this, Ye said also, Behold, what a weariness is it. it just, just, we, we're just... <laughs> We're just tired of serving God. We just don't even know what the point of our service is. You said also, behold, what a weariness is it. And ye have snuffed at it, saith the Lord of hosts. And ye brought that which was torn, and the lame, and the sick. Thus ye brought an offering. Should I accept this of your hand, saith the Lord? So they're, they're, it's as if, and I'm going to use the term Christians. I know they're not Christians, but these are the people that carried the name of the Lord with them. And if you consider yourself a Christian, then you carry the name of the Lord with you. And so I'm, just, I'm going to apply this to Christians. Uh, these Israelites, they, they, they snuff at their religion because they don't know what the purpose of all this ritual and religious gathering is about because they've made it so, such, a, such a mess when their children and their grandchildren show up, they don't see what the point of this thing is. And that they're bringing these six sacrifices. The priests are okaying all these six sacrifices and congratulating the people for being the children of God and all that kind of thing. And, and everyone seems to come to the consensus of what is the point of this? Um, these, what I would say, these lost Christians, and I, again, I'm using that term because I'm just trying to use a term for a group of people who carry the name of the Lord or at least say they carry the name of the Lord. These lost Israelites, or what we could say these in today's terms, these lost Christians are so tired of not understanding what they're doing that they say it's weariness. It just gets old. Can we, can we just go home and watch the game? I mean, can, can we just go camping? Can we, can we just go hunting already? Can we just sleep in? Why, why are we doing what we're doing? And so serving the Lord had become just a, a, a mess. But here's the point. It had become that way because that's what they had made it into. That's what they brought to the table. They were the ones bringing all this pollution into the tabernacle and corrupting this process and corrupting this, this law of light that would be a light to all nations. And then as they corrupted all of that, they got tired of, of it and they didn't understand it. 
And it made no sense. And, and of course it makes no sense. The form of it doesn't make any sense. So serving the Lord became, became a drag. And uh, here, here's what the Lord then says to them. First of all, should I, should I accept these sacrifices? And it's a rhetorical. The answer is no. And then the Lord says this. He says, the heathen outside of all of these walls... They fear me. He says that at the very end of verse 14, my name is dreadful among the heathen. So the Lord says, you know, if I were to leave this, this camp and go among people who don't even claim to know me and start to stir among them, they would be afraid of me. But here I am in the midst of this camp. And people have no regard. The people that God has loved, the people that God has taken care of, the people that God has shepherded, the nation that God has given all of these blessings and advantages to. And the Lord says, you know, the heathen who don't know me treat me better than you who do know me. If I were to go over here to this group or this nation, and, and for instance, if I were to go into a place called Nineveh and tell them, yet 40 days and Nineveh will be destroyed, they will all fast and they'll, they'll, they'll shut down everything. And, and, they, and they, they will respect what I have to say. And then I come to my own people and... They're trying to give me these, these throwaway sacrifices and then it just doesn't make any sense. So, so the common sense of the heathen, you know, if, if here's the state of, of at least some, I guess, so-called Christians now, they're more accustomed to defending sin Whereas if, if you were to talk to, talk to someone who, who says, you know, I, 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 don't, uh, I don't go to church or whatever. And I've had, had people say this, you know, if I, if I started going to church, man, I'd have to stop drinking or I'd have to stop shacking up or I'd have to stop doing this. And this is someone who doesn't go to church. But they seem to have an idea of what they're supposed to, what a holy life looks like. They seem to have that idea. And then you come into a church setting and Christians are finding every angle to defend sin and to coddle sin and to, and to, and to, and to set, set up a cushy place so, so that People feel comfortable in their sin, yet if you go outside the church and meet someone who's not in church and ask them and invite them to church, they might say, you know what, I, I, if, I, if I went there, I would have to stop doing this. And I just use that as an illustration to say it's, it's exactly like Malachi's situation. The people of God show contempt for the things of God. Or the people that would call themselves God's people show contempt for the things of God. Whereas the ones you would call lost or heathen seem to have more respect for God. They at least have some idea of, of holiness and what it looks like. So this is the, that's the case with, with Malachi here. Um, I'll, I'll give you another example of this, of just, just the way... Christians sometimes, I guess, quote unquote, Christians think, um, or it seems like, you know, and just visiting with people. Uh, people, have, people have asked me as a pastor, you know, if, if I, and they say, you know, we, we're visiting churches and things like that. And they say things like, you know, if I, if I come to your church, do I have to stop? And they just name a few things, whatever it is, name something. Do I have to stop doing this? And so my answer generally is, no, you don't have to stop doing anything to come to church. But if you don't plan on changing, 
why are you going to include God in your life anyway? I mean, what, what's the point of inserting God into a life that you're already comfortable with? I mean, what, what would it be the point of that? And so I'm not trying to, to be, just trying to be a little common sense about this thing and, and get to the bottom of it. You know, if, if you don't have any plans, if your life is just okay the way it is and you're just checking things out, why would you want to include God or let God insert himself into that anyway? And that's where the Israelites were. It's kind of like bringing God into our lives is just a burden. It just, it just is, is, it's, doesn't make any sense we don't understand why we're doing it and incorporating the Lord into our everyday lives is just just a hassle. That's Israel. And that's what Malachi is addressing with Israel. So they had made the Lord's table contemptible, but remember the Lord's table was exactly what they had made it. And just 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 like it is now the Lord's table really is what you make it and so it, the Lord really acts like a mirror in this and what you bring to this is kind of what you get out of it and, and you can find out you can really find out what you think about the Lord by what you give to the Lord and that's that's that was the thing God is addressing through Malachi to Israel that they don't think much about the Lord, and the Lord's basing that decision and that assessment of Israel based on what they were offering to him. And, and you, you can look in your own life, and if you find out you really don't offer the Lord that much, that should tell you, you know, I really don't think that much of God. I really don't think that much of him. Or on the other hand, you, you're trying to, to, to serve God, you're a generous person, you're generous with your time, you're generous with your money, you're generous with what God's given you, you're generous with your abilities. That, that's something to be commended because that shows, you know what, I, I actually do think something of God. I, th I think he's worth my time, I think he's worth my investment, I think he's worth my, my, my talents. I mean, he, he, he's given me these things. I, I didn't create these things out of thin hair. He's given me the ability to, to, if he didn't directly give them to me, he's given me the ability to get them. So the Lord's table is what, what you make of it, just like the Lord's table is what Israel made of it. They came to the conclusion that serving God was a drag. What they brought to it, what they brought to the table is what they kind of got out of it. And pretty soon it didn't make sense what, what the point of the whole religion was. And so it was just sort of a form for the priesthood. It was a form of income. For the people, it was just a religion. Just something that we, we do because everyone else, mom and grandpa and great-grandpa did it. And, you know, so we, we go to the tabernacle and we bring these things. And, you know, before they go into the dumpster, they... They go to the go to the altar instead of going to the dumpster. I mean, it's just it, it it really shows what the heart condition of the people was, and then the common sense of the heathen. I mean, the Lord just says, "Look, if I if I were to go outside of this nation and stir among another nation, He says, my name is dreadful among the heathen. But man, I get into my own people." people who, who call me their God and call me Lord and they don't have any respect for me they don't they don't care what I say they don't care what I love they don't care the things that I don't like and do like and so Malachi is as a messenger he is preaching uh, the condition of Israel which is very very much like the condition of Christianity and people, people who would go by, uh, call themselves by God's name, and then at the same time use every, everything they can to defend sin and 
pour contempt on the things of God and then still want to be called by God's name. And uh, it, it, it is a, an incredible indictment, but it's very illustrative, very illustrative of, I mean, it's practical. I'll just say it this way, it's practical. The Bible is very practical, and it digs down into the hearts of people. And the Lord, the point of this is, is the Lord wants to show you your heart, show you what he sees. And hopefully, maybe these things you say, you know what, I love my church, I, I love the Bible, I love telling people about the Lord. You know what, that, that's because you, you, that's good. You think a lot of God, and that, that's, what you, that's good. That's the right attitude. That's the right attitude. Maybe you're, you're not there. Maybe, maybe it's, it's a drag like it was to Israel. Maybe you don't understand the purpose of it. And I would encourage you, parents, I'll, I'll end it on this. Parents, if it's, not, if it's not something that has meaning to you, if, if it's not something, if God's words don't have meaning to you, if, if serving God doesn't have any value to you, I don't want to say good luck having value with your kids, but really, what, what value are they going to see in serving God? If every, every Sunday is a camping trip and every Sunday is we got to go to the gun range and every Sunday we got to go hunting and, you know, when it's time to go talk to somebody about the Lord, I got to go to the ball game. I mean, I had just, just simple examples. You know, right now all that stuff is shut down. Maybe there's a reason for it. Maybe there's a reason for the schedules to be wiped clean. Let's get refocused. Let's, let's get our attention on the things that matter now. Let's, let's get our, our, our heart set and, and our affection set on things above. Serve God. Let's, let's, let's serve God as, as we get through this thing and as we come out of it. Yeah, this, this will be remembered for a long time. And as we get out of it, I mean, we're, we're, we're going to come out of it at some point. And we'll come out of it changed in one way or another. And so let's, let's in this time, when the schedules have been wiped clean, draw nigh to God, and he'll draw nigh to you. Learn what it means to serve God. Enjoy. Learn how to serve God. You say, I, just, I don't enjoy those things. You know what? You just learn to enjoy it. Learn to like some things. I know there's some things in your life that maybe you didn't like before, but you just learn to like it. Learn to like serving God. Learn to do it. All right, well, that is Malachi chapter 1, verses 12 through 14, dealing with a form of godliness. And y'all have a great rest of the week.